Hello everyone, it's Love here and today I have a real treat for you. I promise you, you will be absolutely delighted with today's video. And I think it will be way better if you have seen the obliterator video from yesterday, which I am recording one after another. So I think it gives a lot of nice data, all right? Some of you already know what's, what's that about. Uh, and this deck seems extremely powerful. I wanted to really make a very competitive Jeskai that just is super efficient, and I think we did it. And even without the uh, Helix that we'll soon have in this deck, it seems to be absolutely farming the ladder. I Man, I, I'm halfway to Mythic just by testing and playing the deck. And guys, you know what? I just wanted to see those games because they will be hilarious for for some reasons, all right? You will know why when you watch them. All right, thank you for being here. You are absolutely awesome and let's have some fun together. All right, our opponent goes first. We have only Volcanic Spite, probably putting Memory Deluge on the bottom. And we here we are. Well, I wish that was Helix, all right? I'll be honest, I would prefer that card. But still, uh, what do we go for? So we will have to paint ourselves as well. Triple Memory Deluge, four lands and one removal. This is how we want to draw. All right, they missed. And we have Sokenzen. And even though we generally want to use it normally as a creatures, uh, in this case, I definitely don't want to paint myself for every red spell forever. Sure. You know what? If they miss to drop, there might be a chance, even with this absolutely horrible overdraw, when triple deluge and nothing else. <laughs> and we'll draw one card with the spite, right? So that's pretty important because we really need one. Like and killing squee is extremely good. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> more lands. Can we still draw more memory deluge? That's the real question. <laughs> Can I draw anything else? Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, this is awkward. I need to make a longer pause because I really need him to see it. <laughs> All right. We you need to incorporate monorail players uh, into your mind games. All right. Absolutely great. I wish I had more sandports. <laughs> All right. Well, I would love to draw this one turn earlier. <laughs> Come on, deck. You can do that. You can absolutely do better than this. Uh, we play blue, right? All right. Like, we need to be creative right now because it's getting very rough. We need more stuff like Emperor and, and one mana spells. That's why we have them. We are not blocking. So we go to the damage. They have something? That was something, you know? Something is not good for us. They might have a lot of burn. So whatever we target, they pump the other creatures. We could go Memory Deluge for the Sunfall. All right, this is not a play I would normally make if I didn't think that he has something. Uh, they will burn us in response, probably. If I hit Sunfall, I can go for it, right? And I can clear the board and maybe there we can... Yeah, wow. <laughs> what a crazy play. Nobody saw that coming. All right. Well, those were the cards we needed before. We can use one of them this turn. Okay, this is really good draw. Okay, Pain Lands are really bad for us. Uh, is that too light? Possibly. Possibly. We need to hold the mana and just force them. Those were all the cards we needed early game. If we draw them inversely, this early game and this late game, this would be like a perfect draw. All right, so they want to flip Godric. I think we are not yet dead. Smarky Smark. We call the red mana. This is exactly correct. We don't pain ourselves, which is super impactful. And now whatever they target, we torch the tower. And that's our win. Maybe. Oh, we want to Monstrous Rage. Oh, it would be such a shame if this chick died and got exiled forever. So it cannot be used for Squee. Oh, this one as well. Still no Squee cards. That's that's so rough. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, 
And uh, let's go for this mana. So what is the play for this turn? The Lush into... So you need to not use Painlands in this kind of situation. And we have double Natural Blue and one Natural Red, at least, even two. This blocks Kumana and this protects us against Squee or whatever they draw. It's just Lightning Strikes. Well, that's strong. <laughs> let's see what they go for. Do they draw a card or they are greedy? Greedy, greedy, greedy. I hope they go for a Wicked Roar, because I think we can counter it pretty perfectly. So now we need to think, what do we torch? This, before we lose one life. Exiled. Enjoy your Wicked Roar, because you are Wicked, alright? We need some Emperor's man. Man, they actually went for it, that's... <laughs> That's an interesting one. And we know everything, so let's go for the Deluge. We need some life gain. Uh, this goes around their top deck uh, burn spell. I think it's worth it. Man, we are actually recovering from this absolutely horrible draw, but is this too late? Is it too late? Yep, they can go for Squee. Uh, let's go for the non payland mana. We can go for the Anchorage, but then we die, right? This is daytime. And we cannot play it and flip it, right? We would have only one mana. So I think we have to go for a quick study. And then try from there. So quick study into Anchorage on Squee, but the token kills us. Uh, I think we need to start with this. Okay, this is the draw that matters. Oh boy, unfortunately, because uh, we didn't draw like this uh, in the first place, because we draw everything in the wrong order, uh, we cannot use negate, so the top deck uh, burn will win him the game. And that's how they do it, right? So we can go for Seed Shark into Torch the Tower. And I think this is the play. Not hitting Celestus hurts a lot. But we can play it and flip it on the same turn. Just don't draw burn. I think we can solve everything except this. If they draw a lightning strike or play with fire. They already burned quite a lot of those. Like, we don't have white mana here. No way he drew something. Or he is he reading the... What they are doing? They are playing the squee. Okay. Okay. Here's your token. You know what? This might just be it. <laughs> now? <laughs> now? <laughs> now we don't need your sunfall. Uh, so, we want to go Celestus. Okay. This would be a bit rough, man. But they can only Aether burn or Aether squee. And that should do it. We're going into the night time. Then we go to three. It's not bad, right? So I need to think because we 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 have this game. We just need to play it smart. So I tap here. I go to night time, and it's either a burn from top, in which case they don't play squee, or we activate the token, and then they only deal one damage and lose the squee. And then we have Celestus for the future turns. We have only non-pain mana, so that's also great. And our draws are something else. <laughs> Shark, please hold the line for me. Shark, please hold the line. If they just go play with fire, we are prepared. So we took uh, a little bit worse play just to be safe from everything. So if not, that's not the burn, we had better plays, but then uh, it would be harder. You know, we would auto lose if he draws well. I don't think there is a draw that wins them the game. Right? And we are live gaining. All right, all right. Do you want to attack maybe? I heavily encourage it. They lost, that's it. We managed, man, even with this kind of draw, early game, triple memory delusion and lands and one single spell of interaction, we still managed to win. Man, that's insane. This is actually insane. And let's do my favorite trick. I still want the land, man. 
My favorite trick is going double Celestus triggers and watch like uh, how our monoret friends just absolutely crumble in despair as we gain two life a turn. We have this as a blocker, so we have three creatures they cannot attack. We also have the Anchorage. However, what do we do if they do nothing? Well, we life gain. We cycle cards. We are, I think we are fine. And we might cast Negate and then uh, activate one of the tokens. I absolutely will. No need for land. Man, that's nice. That is nice. And now we are prepared with double negate, so every burn spell is basically a dead draw for them. And extremely good because we, got, we have shark synergy. So in the end it actually turned into moderately interesting games, probably the best monorad we'll ever see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, if we can draw everything wrong without helix and we still win against tier 1 monorad, I mean... Oh man, that's that's good. Good for them. Three, two. Do you want to like swing? Of course they do. That's what they do. We still have uh, negate man. That was zero priority. And I think we activate this one as well. It doesn't seem they have monstrous rage. And that means we get everything. Uh, you know what? The correct block is here, because if they have it, even though they don't, uh, the trample gets less damage this way. And here it doesn't matter. You want to kill red creatures in case they play warfare, because it amplifies red and artifact creatures, not colorless. Not a big difference, but enough. And let's watch them crumble. <laughs> Double live game. Oh, let's start discarding sunfalls to show where we are in this game. I will play my land. Do you want to do something, my friend? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you can feel their dreams getting shattered. Uh, I will actually decline. I like my hand. There's nothing I will change here. They will draw burn at some point. Don't you worry. Thank you. Thank you, Monoret, for this fulfilling experience. Well, here's your future control deck. We are on the play, which is extremely nice. Man, this is a really good hand. We not only have interaction, we can cycle bad cards if we find the matchup. All right, guys, I need to, we need to talk. Uh, you remember yesterday's Obliterator video where we didn't see a single mono red for 10 games and it was one and a half hour nearly. I, I'm playing those two games, the one you have seen probably previously and this one, literally as the first games after that video and I've seen two monorets in a row. I'm just saying, it happened. This is, uh, this is what happened <laughs> in the last two videos. I didn't see them for 10 games, then I went control, and this is only thing I'm seeing. It's probably just a coincidence, so it's fine. Man, that, I actually really didn't think we'll see monorets, but here we are, here we are. Uh, Sunfall, I don't know. I. Man, Emperor is one of the best cards against them. It has to be this. I, I hate it, but it has to be this, man. <laughs> like, otherwise we might not play anything on the next turn. Well, easy choice, unless they are really desperate for run. But that's crazy. Man, I didn't see this deck for over, like, one and a half hour in early. And here we are, changing the deck two in a row. That's crazy. That's so crazy. Uh, but, you know, just, I'm just saying random things. It's fine. We will try to fight them. Uh, it will be hard, to be absolutely honest. I have a feeling we'll lose this. Uh, if they want to use Lightning Strike, they need to lose the tempo. So, yeah, honestly, this is better play. They should not go... Oh, they might make a treasure. So they're getting the best of both worlds. They still sneak this one damage, right? I mean, it's fine, it's a 1 mana 1-1 one, one, basically, but they're going for the sweet value. Will be hard, will be hard to beat. However, man, imagine if we had Helix, we would be at 18 right now. And we would kill the Askumano. And, man, we would actually be at 15, 17 after this attack. Man, I cannot wait for this. Uh, let's go for the Emperor mana. We are overdrawing a little bit. 
Not so he burned double lightning strike. There is a high chance he doesn't have another one. Let's see if he activates for with the foundry. I don't think this is the state of the game where they should go for it. Uh, but you really never know. Scoundrels. If he taps fully, that would be so great because then I can make those tokens. But I don't think we will have this luxury. Oh my god, we will have this luxury. They're going for it. And that's huge. We're getting all the value. A smork. A smork has happened. Alright. Now the decision. We can get free trade here. Exile Kumano. Or just go for a good trade versus Foundry. This costs them mana, so it's harder to activate than Kumano. I think this is the correct block. Next turn is Sun. Oh my god, next turn is Sun. Man, I nearly missed it. That's huge. Oh my god, we just won this game. Even without the Helix. Man, we are absolutely farming Monoret. Even without the best card that we will have in a moment. That's insane. <laughs> and uh, just a kind reminder two games after Obliterator in a row, two Monorets. Just, just saying. Uh, tick. Unfortunately, that probably spells the end for our Emperor, and they might still pump it. Theoretically, they can go double monster straight, right? And that will be a lot. Man, we might still lose this. I, I actually think we might still lose this. Uh, okay, they don't have a pump spell. I, uh, otherwise, I think they would go for the face. Fire of Victory can be very good play. Negate. Listen, what would happen? If I attacked your face, there's an instant, so negate will probably be useful. And this is a 3 3 for 2 mana, this can also be very, very useful. Uh, the Anchorage will probably save us, to be honest. <laughs> and yeah, let's see. We can kill Godric as well. Uh, the fact that they lost 1 mana and this Mishra's Foundry is actually huge. Uh, Alright. Okay. One damage is not enough. Man, Helix, if we this was also a Helix, we would be at 13 already. And they would concede. Man, I cannot wait. <laughs> oh, this would be so glorious. Uh, how much burn do you think they have? Lightning strike, play with fire, play with fire. That's seven damage. <laughs> That's actually seven damage, man. Do you really think they have the perfect answer? We cannot allow this to just hit us in the face every turn. Alright, go for it. If you have triple burn, like you are a true champion of magic. Like, you deserve the win for drawing those cards. Uh, I think he shouldn't have it. Like, the chance is so small, man. Also, they burned double lightning strike already. This was extremely good card. It will still be a very good card, right? And this is their time to shine. They can burn as much as they want, but... But it will be hard to burn more with a negate. I'm sorry. Either you do it or not. Everyone knows what we are doing. This cannot be countered, so there's literally no sense to do this play. <laughs> Man, Monorad players just always surprise me with weirdest play ever. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, probably. I think they thought it's my end step. They didn't really, you know, connect the phases, how the game works. It's fine. They're high diamond. It's okay. So, 6 mana, right? We de I think we want to go with this man. We have enough creatures. I think we just need to defend. And I mean, yeah, we will attack. Man, if they double block, that would be hilarious. Alright. I mean, you can see that Vigilance does a nice job of just pressuring them for free. If this had Vigilance, I would activate it and attack for 5 a turn. But, you know. It's like, Vigilance is actually a really good ability that I didn't value enough. I, I learned to appreciate it. I see. That's pretty good. But no celebration. We can trade against Godric. And if they attack with everything, they only get one damage throw. I think this is where they lost. They cannot keep up anymore. And Celestus, the arch nemesis of every Monoret player. I'm not scared, only one mana open. Uh, we could kill Godric with this one mana, but it's not worth it. Three and two. 
Well, this might be actually a bit rough of a rough turn, to be absolutely honest with you. So how do we do it? How do we do it? We get free mana with Celestus, but we only have five. Which means we cannot cast those three cards in a row. So if we go Anchorage, we still have one mana for Stor Torch the Tower. We need to really be careful, man, but if he doesn't play anything, what do we do? Memory Delush? Let's make situation a bit easier. Huh? It's a good block for you. I would take it. <laughs> I would just take it. It's so good. So juicy. Yeah, that's what I thought. They definitely do something this turn, right? Yeah, it was a hard choice because this will decide the game and I'm making his best turn the most vulnerable for me. But worst case, I can bargain the Celestus and I still can have uh, enough mana for some place. And I can use Anchorage to block and then use the mana after I declare block. So I, I'm not losing the mana from at least the creature. Double Sokenzan and they decided the second one triggering celebration is not good enough. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this should be it, right? This is definitely a worthwhile target. They definitely want to use this. And we still have Negate. And if we counter the last card, it means they cannot go through the board. So worst case, we still win. Best case, we still win. We generally win. And that's the case. All right. So <laughs> uh, that's an interesting choice. You know what? I will negate it. So you can start feeling a little bit of this sweet despair from Monored player. Honk. Oh, the power honk is appropriate. <laughs> Man, I thought we would just keep playing against Control, which yesterday was the only part of the ladder, but it seems that we are farming Monored today. I'll take it. I will take it. We need flyers. Uh, Spire is not the best for this matchup. And we'll cycle into the night time anyway. So in this uh, turn we are not attacking, because we don't need it. We actually cycle the Spire, it's not a good card, but it's probably still better... No, it's actually worse than a land, because it's tapped. And we have a lot of mana that we need to use. Like, we can use n 10 mana with just land, so, you know, that's the case. One card doesn't mean 8 damage to the face. And here we oh man that's that's the face I'm loving. Oh can you can you smell the scoop in the air? Because I can. Man, this is just glorious. I could be more aggressive. Yeah, let's be aggressive because we have all those lands. And I like him. Uh, I like killing him. Sorry, that was uh, a little bit of a different meaning right there. <laughs> I want to force him into attacking because then uh, he plays right into my trap and he just absolutely lost hope. He just waited for, lingered for three turns. Uh, I, I'm still sorry but it was still monored so no. Man we are actually farming like crazy. All right I think that's a good hand man. Like, we have all the mana since the start, we used tap lands on our turns where we didn't have plays, and we have negate and a lot of card advantage. Let's see if that's another mountain, because I think the monorad is not very good for this hand. Alright, I'll take it. So which color of the mana we don't need? We have one red, I don't think we need more. I don't think we need more. Man, I think we're winning this. This is an extremely good draw. It has everything, man. Answers to everything they can play. And with quick, quick stat, we can super quickly reload. Possibly after showing them a counter spell. Oh, man. I, I've seen this card. It's actually super scary. Man, it, this card is so scary. I don't want it in the board. I have bad memories of this. <laughs> Uh, so they they have to sacrifice something. I'm not sure fully the synergy they are playing, but I know it will hurt me and it will hurt me super much because this can grow like crazy and the Yeah, the counter is permanent if I recall it just menaces until end of the turn So yeah, they probably play like virus beetles things like this uh, which give the value by just 
entering the battlefield or something. But man, my draw is actually insanely good. We don't need Celestis, we just need to have a balanced growth and we can absolutely win this game as well. Man, Jeskai might be actually the best deck. <laughs> Definitely for control it has a first shot because we are already destroying Prader and we don't even have the best card yet. Enters the bat, oh my god, that's so sad. I love it. Well, that should be a win. They put zero pressure and we have Memory Deluge. Uh, I will take one of them. I have a land for the next turn, so we go another. I'm probably too greedy. I don't need the third one, but you know, I might draw 20 lands in a row, and this is why what I'm hedging against basically. We can take one huge hit, we are at 18, because this will line up for perfectly, right? It sets up farewell, it gives us quick study, and he, if he pumps this creature to oblivion for some reason, we just destroy evil it. So I don't see any, like, you know, dangers for us. It, it's not over, but I don't think there are many plays that really hurt us. And with Emperor we can absolutely destroy this kind of attacks for the next turn. We are not wasting a single point of mana. Ah, I see. Alright. I'm trying to figure out what exactly they want to sacrifice. It seems that Underdog is on the line. I mean, we appreciate your enthusiasm, but, you know... You will just get sacrificed for the sake of <laughs> feeding a huge, weird vehicle that absolutely is terrifying. So, uh, do we go for a while and just end this, you know, situation? Or we go Emperor and try to play it slow? I really like all of those cards, man. I don't like tapping out. I honestly don't think we can lose if we uh, keep the mana. And I can get rid of one spite. It's a great card, I love it, but we'll get infinite value this game, so we have one memory dirge, second memory dirge, two for one, million for one, like, he's not be beating us in the value, he can only beat us in tempo, so we don't want to tap. Step number one. And let's see if they go for uh, Tenacious Sandler Dock Removal, we can still hit it in the graveyard, so it, it doesn't matter and it drains their cards. You, de you have dealt two damage and we live gain two. I'm not killing it, like, this doesn't matter at all. I would rather keep the mana for something they might play. <laughs> main face Mirex. A main face Mirex, cause why not? Alright, oh, to its power, target creature to its power to another target. Oh, because it sacrifices itself, right? Well, that's unfortunate. Oh man, we absolutely destroyed everyone with this deck. Man, I will be accidental mythic in a, in a moment. Alright guys, after the games, I really hope you had as much fun as I did. To be fair, Jeska is one of my favorite archetypes. I think it has a little bit of everything. It has all the powers from Azorius, but the red removal spells are insane. I really like especially Fires of Victory and cards like Victor, uh, Vol <laughs> Victor is Volcanic Spite because it can fix your card over every game uh, without spending additional mana and cycling this third memory deluge into land that you needed to carve out can save you games and this is the type of cards I'm trying to use more because I think they make the deck more consistent and sometimes you you know if you play control sometimes it just hurts to not hit the single land and lose the game because of it with all the interesting lands like Anchorage and uh, you know Spire our draws and mana base is way more flexible and I think it really shows in the game and with cards like Seed Shark we actually have very easy time closing the games which is normally not the case for control so we have Jace against Atraxa decks that I actually didn't see since forever and uh, just this to close the game after we recover. Also, even if you cast a single 4 mana spell like an Emperor, uh, using 2 mana for 4 gives you so much tempo against aggressive decks that very often... You have seen this one token hold Godric in check for like 4 turns in a row. If not the token, we would actually get like 12 damage probably. So that's super insane. I really like the deck and I, I don't even want to think how insane it will be with Helix. Man, Lightning Helix is just a card I cannot wait for. And I'm not an expert on metagame, alright? I didn't like put hours and days and weeks and months of research into it. But 
it, it feels to me that having life gain on top of a removal for exactly the red creatures might shut the deck super down, right? Talia at least taxes uh, control decks. Monored just hopes to draw this burn. And when you life gain three, I have played with Helix in Historic and I was amazed how insanely powerful the card is, even in Historic. And we are talking about standard here, so man, Fingers crossed, because I think uh, it will be very, very fun standard. We'll see. I cannot wait the new set. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this peek into the future a little bit. Tell me in the comments if you enjoyed it. I will be back tomorrow, so I will try to respond to as many comments as possible. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for making them and for caring. So, enjoy farming the ladder. Oh, and see you tomorrow, guys.